excitement, terror, demons, unresolved trauma. Uh, but yeah, excitement and terror, I think, for me. It always seemed so frantic. It always felt like it could be snatched away at any moment. So and it was a one opportunity to, to make this thing. I think since then, we leveled out a bit. But everything, it was so heightened, every sensation. Songs, really. Guided by songs, guided by the jukebox, as always. Uh, and the silences between the songs and the lost days, trying to live, trying to make a life, and in the end, always just having to return to the song and that being the only place really that, that made sense. It was, like, it was like stepping stones, refuges, you know what I mean, Am amidst the raging torrent. I think the, I think the torrent and the, and the rage and the, and the terror, I think they, 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 they were in the songs as well, but they were manageable with the songs, so it was like a safe place. On a really basic level, yeah, just in, in terms of when we actually sit down and write songs, it's exactly the same feeling. Thank God as well, you know what I mean? Because it's uh, it's not the familiarity I like. It's just something that was just where I get my kicks really, I think, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's harder. I think I think if you're open to it, songs come to you, and if you're lucky, you get you get good ones. I, I, I mean, it's always hard writing songs. It's like, um, if songs are like your faith, if music's your faith, it's very easy to become detached from your faith. But the more you invest in it and the more time you spend, the more likely you are to get a visitation from something beautiful. And uh, I think we've done that a lot more in this album. We've all been present and we've all been looking in the same direction. And I think, uh, and I, and I think we've been rewarded for that in the songs. We're all really happy with them. But uh, I don't think it's harder. I think it's actually our chemistry over the years it's actually become a bit easier. We can be, we can communicate more honestly with each other about what we feel about certain things, and, and we can trust each other. That's a big part of it in collaborative writing. Any collaborative art, it's all about trust, and it takes years to get that trust. So, yeah, a good point. Good point, well made. Yeah, I think musically, it's easier. I think like writing the music. Um, once we get in a room, I think lyrically. It can be, it, it, maybe it's, it's, it's always been tricky, isn't it, lyrically, because it, it's so important to us, the words. Uh, we never want it to be half half assed. It's difficult until it's not. Like he said, you know, when you get the visitation, you just got to be there, really. Prepare yourself for the, the transcendence, the incantation. Yeah, like a praying for rain or dancing for rain or something like that. You've got, to be, you've got to be open to it when it comes. I remember John, our bass player, saying, uh, if the muse comes with an offering and you can't be asked, you're like, oh, for fucking Netflix muse, then like, then it disappears and the muse doesn't, isn't so keen to come back. So you have to really devote yourself a little bit and be prepared to, and it can be, that can be fucking hard work. I think it went great. It couldn't have gone, it couldn't have gone better. We chose Jamaica because um, it's somewhere we've never been. It was culturally important to us and, 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 and culture we love. And um, I think it was uh, like a, an old colonial outpost, you know. And when we got there, it was the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. So it was quite a, it was quite a powerful moment. It was and a it, hurricane as well. Yeah, it was a hurricane on, in this glass hut on top of a yeah, beautiful... It was, like a, it was surrounded by glass and all the birds, all the tropical birds had gone crazy because of the wind and they kept, just kept flying into the side of the studio. You know what I mean? Just like bang, all these birds knocking themselves unconscious. You see them like battered by the storm, but then slowly coming back to life. You know what I mean? Realizing they're, they're, they're still in paradise and getting on with it, foraging for nuts, etc. Yeah, <laughs> foraging. What? <laughs> That's no forage. What do they do then? Finding nuts? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then uh, also we, we had another uh, quite a powerful experience. We went down to a church. It was like a church on a hill. Um, and it was just, I mean, it didn't have walls. It was really quite a... Tabernacle. Tabernacle, yeah. And it was, uh, and the people there were so invested. It was so, it, it, and they were in their collection and they were like quaking and, and it was quite mind blowing for us to, and <clears throat> it, it made it into a lot of the songs actually. That kind of, that religious experience and that kind of existential, where are we now? Who are we? What is, what is all this? It was, it was a great start to, the, to writing. You got quite involved, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. The ministry called a while. Indeed. Did you see the sky? Yeah, yeah. That's 
the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> yeah. It feels perfect. It feels like we're capable of so much. No, oh, that's a nice positive, positive answer. You know what I mean? Maybe before it was a bit more like we were in a hall of mirrors. You know, at the fairground, you're in a hall of mirrors. You don't know who's real or what's what, or if you're fat or thin. Now I know what I am. There's a bit of compromise in the studio, I think. I mean, it's about the song. Like, we, we all have to agree that wh whoever's done what part is, it has to be for the best of the song. Uh, so that's kind of not a very good answer, is it? Come on, you can, you, can, you can do better than that. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. I don't, I don't really like analysing these things too much, really, I'm thinking about it, but there probably are things. Like, uh, that when we were in the studio this time, Carl said there's going to be no, no drugs or alcohol. So we tried that, which is the first time we've done that really, because normally it all went together. Do you know what I mean? You're drinking and, and making music. For me, it was all part of it. So that was a bit of self sacrifice and discipline, yeah, on my part. Oh, oh, so it was just hard. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But I think that, I think it did very well. But I think that allows us to, I mean, it was, it was hard for all of us not to imbibe, but it's about the focus. And uh, we needed to have the focus, and we and 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 by not having that that chaos, and it it made it it made us it was just so much more efficacious. F what's the word? Efficacious. F yeah. <laughs> it, 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 the it efficacy was, was there. It was, it was a lot more effective. But you can't plan yeah. you can't plan for these things at all. You know what I mean? You can have like a you can have six weeks of sobriety and a sober coach and the best equipment, the best studio in the world, but. Still, the best idea might come to you, you know, at the back of the tour bus after being awake for four weeks. You know what I mean? Sat at the back of a grubby tour bus, you know what I mean? I think it's different for, every, for everyone. And for me, writing's fucking hard. You know, I have to really, to get into, if I, if I tell myself that I have to write every day, then I'll find a way out of it. I'll find a way to not really write and be writing. I have to, I'm still working on that. I, but I find, but some people find writing a lot easier. For some people are a lot more prolific, but, I really care about what I write, and when, I, when I'm in the moment, I'm there, but... Yeah. Well, it's just it's different between writing for pleasure and just writing because you need to, and then actually trying to do something that is going to be commercial or that, you know, because we are in an industry as well. So it's, it's quite a dangerous uh, situation as an artist to be in, really, when you are worried about commercial venture. Yeah, you have to make, you have to make true arts, I think. I mean, any, any, any art that isn't true is just going to be crap. I think, uh, and you have to be true to yourself and uh, first and foremost, but you can still do that with an, an ear and an eye to what's going on in that cultural landscape. I think, I think that's, uh, it's important to do that and it's a shame that you have to, but you do have to. But then I guess when like Matisse first, like, or when uh, Mondrian did his fucking squares, he, he, he knew what was going on in the rest of the art world. Do you know what I mean? He, didn't, he, 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 wasn't, selling out, he wasn't selling out, he was being a part of it. So I'm arguing no, no, with myself here. When, when, I, when I hear people say things like, we don't care what anyone thinks, we just do what we love, and that's enough. That's all very well, and I'd love to, maybe a part of me would love to be like that, but that's not how I see it at all, really. Otherwise, I just stay at home and play for myself. You know what I mean? When we, when we take songs on the road, we want people to enjoy it and have a good time. Was it what did you to the squares? Uh, Kandinsky. No, it wasn't Kandinsky. He did lines. No, he did the triangles and shit. Yeah, and some squares as well. Oh, fuck off. Did you see the stylish kids in the riot shoveled up like monks said the night? I've always seen London as, a, as, a, as an organism. It's like a great beast, and you can go in there as a, as a young man, and you can. And it's, a, it's a 2,000 year old museum, but in but the centre of the world's connectivity. I think it's so. I think it's so exhilarating, um, and I think, and, 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 yeah, I think it's, uh, and I, I still absolutely revere it. I love it. I, I think. Um, I'll, I'll always be a Londoner, you know. But I think I don't need to be there right now. I think I've got family. I've got. Uh, I think it's a bit of a young man's game, really. I, I, I was living there for, for years and not going anywhere other than my house. Yeah, no, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. That's just how it happens to be, because of who we are yeah. as, as people and the demons and the darks inside. Uh, so if you're writing true, truthfully, it's going to include that, really. That's, about, that's our palette, you know. Hey, I have a question for you. <laughs> well, How do you deal with your demons every day? Sometimes with difficulty, but on a good day, 
uh, I can listen to my demons without fear and they cease to be demons on a good day on a bad day it's run 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 so yeah <laughs> Question for you. <laughs> oh, everything and nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's just quite a simple, simple idea. You know what I mean? About the, uh, about basically about making a beast out of yourself, and uh, the implosion or the explosion of the senses. And there's times when I think I, I was, I was concerned I would never come back from that, and then it wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have cared. But the problem is when you do come back. And then you have to rebuild it all over again if you choose to. And I just seem to keep getting back up and then throwing myself headlong back into the, the environs. On be wrong. On be wrong, does that mean about? Uh, I can't talk, I've got this thing in my head. I think we would have found a different way to do it. He was quite savvy back then, he was quite modern, he understood about the internet stuff a lot, a lot more than I did. He, and he understood about, a lot more about the surrounding pop culture with the enemy and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't even have a phone now. I'm not even like, I can't even get online. So I, yeah. I feel like a little bit cast adrift. But um, probably, we, probably we wouldn't have relied so much on the industry, you know what I mean? It would have been a lot more just creating our own world because you, you, you're able to do that now, do you know what I mean? With social media, you can build your own little world of fame, which is what, also what intrigued us was the world of fame. But then you needed you needed the mainstream and we're now quite attached to that and it's sort of the thing that, it's like one of those little tugboats, you know when a boat comes into a harbour and you get the, the, the thing that steers the ship into the right place? Yeah. And now we've become a little bit more laissez-faire, like, oh, uh, someone will get us there. Whereas before I had to be driving and I had to be in control. Um, I don't know. The car insurance is getting a lot more expensive though, so. What yours is? Uh, all car insurance. Well, Five grand. What a week? Do you know, because if, if you're a, if you're a musician, then the, 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 you have to pay a higher insurance premium for your car. My mate, he's got a funny accent, and he told me he was a magician. And he goes, and he goes, well, if, ever, if ever they form, he pays a lot less. And he goes, if ever they form me up, I just see. I said I was a musician. <laughs> yeah. The ones I'll tell you one that's true and one that's a lie. Okay, one is that. Um, Carl could never pass. Carl could never swim. Right? He was never a good swimmer. And uh, actually, he was petrified of water. When he flayed his senses, he would throw himself headfirst into water. Do you know what I mean? Like a canal or a river or anything. He'd just throw himself into the water. Do you know what I mean? And I'd have to dive in and rescue him. Another story is once we were all, sat, the name the Libertines came about because we were all sat by a canal one night and there was a bottle, there was an empty bottle of wine floating in the canal and there was, uh, there was some graffiti, that, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it had the word libertines in it and the first person to hit the, the bottle with a stone got to choose the name of the band and we all had to, it had to be a name of the band chosen from a bit of graffiti and a guy called Scarborough Steve, he hit the um, he hit the bottle with a stone, but he couldn't read, he was dyslexic, and he decided that the band was going to be called the Libertines. Um, the Libertines. Okay. We once played a gig, in, before we got signed, in a nursing home, 50 quid. That's all, because, yeah, that's, that's what, what, what we used to go out for, wasn't it? So, yeah, 50 quid. And uh, everyone in the nursery home fucking hated it. And um, so we'd be playing music when the lights go out, and someone died. This came and pulled the curtains around the bed. Yeah. Um, and a different story. The academics of England com came together and conferred a doctorate on one of the band. Uh, one band member, the, 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 the foremost academics of the country, just decided should be a doctor. Yeah. Both, both of mine were true, actually. Yeah, so both of mine were true. So. Since you said goodbye.